Hi everyone. Uh, we'll start the webinar in just a few minutes. Uh, while you're getting settled in, though, I encourage you to take this little test you can see on the screen right now, uh, if you haven't done so already. Uh, the link is on your screen, and I will just add it in the comments as well. Um, it would be really great if you could test, uh, to take this little test, because uh, we'll be using it as an example through the webinar today uh, to explain many of the concepts. So uh, I do hope you take it if you haven't done so already. See you in a few minutes. Right. So, um, hello everyone, uh, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Neha. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at DOT, and today I will be talking to you about interactive content, how to unlock powerful customer data, and boost conversion. So, before starting, I'd like to thank uh, Bright Talk for inviting me to speak today. And I'd also like to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, it's going to be a 60-minute webinar, and we're going to discuss lots of concepts, ideas, and tactics. So I hope you can leave today with a few useful takeaways to drive your B2B content marketing. Uh, before starting, I'd like to touch on a few housekeeping items. During the webinar today, I will ask you a few questions uh, to, work, to vote on certain topics, which will appear on your screen uh, to the right. And I hope you take part in that. Um, also, I encourage you to ask as many questions as you want uh, using the questions panel on the right. I'll take those at the end. And if we exceed our time slot today, so if we go over 60 minutes and we don't get to your questions, uh, I can get back to you via email if you want. Also, the slides from today uh, will be sent to you afterwards. And I believe they're being recorded as well. So you needn't bother with taking notes. Just uh, sit back, relax, and listen in. So uh, without any further ado, let's just dig in to today's presentation. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I work for a company called Dot, uh, which is a new interactive content marketing platform. And our goal is to empower marketers like you to start creating inter engaging interactive content like quizzes, assessments, interactive videos, and more uh, on your own without needing any IT support or coding. It's pretty easy to use uh, and affordable as well. So it's a, it's a great solution to get started uh, with interactive content. But moving on, um, today we are going to talk about uh, many different things with respect to interactive content. We are going to talk about exactly what it is, uh, why we use it, what's the difference uh, between passive and interactive. We're also going to kind of unlock those quiz results that, uh, that all of you took. We're going to talk about the types of interactive content, the various types, along with live examples. Um, we're going to talk about personalized content, uh, the three-step process to higher conversion, how to repurpose content you already have into interactive formats, new lead gen tactics, uh, understanding your data needs, best practices in terms of interactive content, and also what kinds of interactive content we're going to use. Uh, you should be using. So um, I hope I hope you leave today with some interesting uh, takeaways. So uh, let's get started. So we're here today to talk about content marketing, which we all know is a great way uh, to connect with existing and potential customers, educating them not just about what we have to offer, but also about our area of expertise. Um, we do this, of course, to establish thought leadership in our industry and to build trust so they rely on us as a source of information. And of course, in today's social media age, uh, we also want to encourage uh, social media sharing. Um, so um, 
Apart from that, we also, of course, want to generate subscribers and leads who we can profile and nurture. But regardless of which company you're from, uh, what kind of company you're from, um, your end goal eventually with content marketing is to drive a profitable customer action, which is what we are going to focus on today. Now, uh, before we move on, you know, let's take a little bit. Let's let's take a step back. Let's let's check in with today's content consumer. What's happening with him? Um, now, if we take a step back and look at content marketing, specifically online content marketing over the last couple of years, over the last few years, uh, we've seen that it has evolved over time. We started out with basic web and blog content, which was text-heavy, you know, SEO focused. And then we started to see the emergence of various forms of rich content, like infographics, beautifully designed ebooks, and even webinars like this one. And of course, today we're seeing this trend uh, with video, with video marketing. So um, you know, the content marketing online has evolved, uh, and with each different form of content, it's always kind of we've always seen trends emerging because marketers want to stand out, they want to differentiate, and they want to cut through the digital clutter with a new format. So um, having said that, you know, content marketing is great, it's effective, um, which is exactly why so many companies have invested in it. In fact, uh, according to a latest study by CMI, 70% of B2B companies intend on creating more content than they did before. So if you're creating standard web uh, content formats like blogs, infographics, videos, and so on, the competition is only going to get more intense from here on out. So you know we are dealing with a more crowded um, content space today. And you know that said, it's safe to say that content online today has just exploded, right? It's just taken off. It's truly taken off. And you know, we are producing more content than people can actually consume. I mean, if you look at the amount of attention an individual has each day to spend online reading blogs or ebooks, it, it's kind of finite, right? The amount of time, the amount of attention they can give you is finite. Versus the amount of content that is already available online, which is growing, if you take those two numbers and divide it, it's logical to conclude that the amount of attention uh, your audience can spend per content asset is decreasing. And uh, just like people, and in a way, you know, just like people have developed ad blindness uh, with display ads, you know, we might soon be dealing with a situation where people develop content blindness. And of course, we don't want that. So we need to start um, engaging. We need to kind of activate this board. Uh, this board content consumer and really engage him uh, with content. So that's one of the things that we really need to focus on, and well, that's one of the things uh, we're going to talk about in terms of interactive content today. Now, um, you know, we talked about content and how companies are producing blogs and ebooks and so on, um, but you know, that's great. Company, you know, people are overloaded with content, but you know, what is it that they really care about now? Um, <laughs> short cats. Everybody loves cats and babies. Uh, we've seen that with cats on Instagram. But I mean, unless you're selling cat food or cat milk, there's not much you can do with cats. But one thing that people do care about is themselves. Uh, people care about uh, their own lives, their moods, um, their feelings. And we've seen this. I mean, social media is evidence of this fact. Uh, we've seen how um, social media has kind of taken over the last many years, and that's because people are in a way, and this is not nice to say, but it is true, uh, people are in a way kind of narcissistic. They want to talk about themselves. They want it to be about themselves. And that's something we need to learn as marketers. We need to start personalizing our content and make it talk to the individual. Also, I mean, in terms of building a subscriber base, let's talk a bit about the normal tactics that we use, right, the typical tactics. So I'm sure you all uh, have seen and used these tactics. Uh, you know, you have a blog with this subscribe pop-up that comes, or um, you know, landing pages with opt-ins, uh, so on and so forth. And it's been tried and tested, right? We've seen this everywhere. Somehow, when you go to a blog, you know, you always magically see this, you know, in your face pop-up that magically appears the minute you you decide to bounce off. And you know, people are kind of 
they've seen enough of this now, and they're kind of like, hmm, is there really value in this for me? Uh, is there value, you know, would I get value by subscribing, or would I just get spammed? There's so much of it already. And we've also seen this tactic that I'm sure as a B2B marketer you've probably used before. I'm sure I know I have. <laughs> you know, you dangle the, the carrot, you dangle the ebook carrot, and then kind of ask people uh, to fill out all of this information um, in exchange for your ebook. And you know, um, the customer is really thinking now. So I have to fill out all of this stuff before I get the goods. Um, you know, in exchange for one ebook, you want to know where I, uh, where I work and what I do and um, everything about my life. So much stuff to fill out just in exchange for an ebook. And you know, this is a tried and tested tactic uh, that has worked for a lot of companies. So you know, everyone has kind of jumped on um, the ebook bandwagon, and the result is that you know, not all ebooks are of good quality. Some of them are you know just substandard. And consumers, content consumers, um, our audience, they're kind of you know wondering, is this really worth it? Um, so oftentimes, a consumer will fill out all of this information and feel disappointed with the content that they get in return. Even if you're a reputed company with a great ebook, people are becoming less and less willing to share their details, or, or sometimes they even put in fake information. I, I am sure you've seen this before. Uh, because whether the content is great or not, uh, you know they're certainly sure that uh, after they fill out the form, there will be a marketer on the other side, on the other end, who will start sending them emails and promotions. So you know customers are wisening up, and the same kind of tried and tested, uh, same run of the mill tactics don't always work as well anymore. Um, it might be time to try and shake things up. Um, also, you know ebooks aren't cheap to create. Um, they are typically pretty demanding in terms of time and resources. So uh, let me ask you a question now. Um, I'm sure you're all B2B marketers in the house. So how much time do you normally spend in creating an ebook? Is it a few days, a week, a month, maybe more? Let me just uh, release that vote for you. Hold on. Um, there we go. So you can vote now by clicking on the panel on the right. But I will go on while you vote. So um, you know we need to offer value. We need to start offering value, and we also need to balance out our return on investment when we create content. When we invest so much time in creating uh, these heavy forms of content, is it worth? Uh, is it worth um, doing? Do we get enough out of it? So. Another thing that we really need to think about with our content is that what are we learning about our our audience, our target customer? Um, apart from what we ask in our lead gen forms or our opt-in forms, what is it that we're really learning about the customer? Does our content tell us, you know, what are their individual needs, their pains, uh, their preferences? We need to be able to actually know this information because if we don't do that, this is what ends up happening. Uh, we end up sending our customers lots of um, we send promotions or, or content that is not necessarily targeted to the needs or preferences. So the customer kind of gets bombarded with irrelevant content that doesn't necessarily talk to the individual. And what we end up seeing is this: if we send people content that doesn't speak to their needs, they end up avoiding you, and God forbid they end up unsubscribing. And nobody wants that. Um, I don't know how you feel, but um, if there are any Game of Thrones fans in the house, um, but I have—I always feel like a one one in this scene, you know, where every uh, every unsubscribe is like an arrow straight to my heart. <laughs> it uh, it hurts when somebody unsubscribes. So um, we don't want that. We certainly don't want that. So our pitching should be much more targeted uh, as well. So let's let's recap. Today's content consumer, right? We need to start engaging. We need to start personalizing content. We need to learn more about who they are. We need to offer value in exchange for all of that lead information, and we need to make our pitching more targeted. So we need to achieve all of these things, and that's why that's why we have interactive content because it's great at doing all of these things. 
interactivity engages people. It gives us as marketers the opportunity to deliver real-time personalized content. It gives us the opportunity to learn more about who they really are. Um, because it is personalized, immediate, real-time results, it offers the customer value in exchange for lead information. And it also enables us to create more targeted marketing, more targeted emails, and targeted promotions. So there's lots of things um, that, there are lots of really great things that we get from interactive content, um, which is why we've seen an emergence of it. We've seen uh, large companies with deep pockets here, as you can see, um, who have adapted interactive content, who are, of course, doing not abandoned everything else, but you know, really staying cutting edge and now adapting new forms like interactive content to achieve all of those things we just talked about. Now, what exactly is interactive content? Right? What are the formats? I have no doubt that you have seen them before. Um, You've seen, I'm sure, quizzes, assessments, interactive videos, um, things like calculators, in interactive infographics. I'm quite sure you've seen these. And th the common denominator for all of these interactive formats is that unlike passive content, that is, you know, your standard blog post or your ebook uh, or your podcast or video, whatever it is, when people are passively reading, listening, or watching, Interactive content gets people to actually actively do something, actively participate. It gets them to click or answer questions, choose preferences, navigate to something, play, guess, explore, vote, two different things that really get them to actively engage in the experience. So um, there's, lots of, there's lots of things that we can actually get out of interactive content. Moving on. Now, um, to illustrate my point, I'm going to um, do this with an example. Um, what we're going to do is compare. Uh, how many of you, well, I don't have voting anymore, so I can't ask you. But um, I hope at least some of you took the time to take the test. What is your marketing superpower? Um, this test was inspired by a passive piece of content, which was a blog post I found online, which was, the four types of marketers. And this was just a long uh, blog post which I thought, hey, um, you know, what if I turn that into a fun quiz? So I am now going to compare the blog post to the quiz. It's not a fair comparison, I know, uh, but it is, I hope, going to in illustrate my, uh, my point of comparing the two. So for those of you who did not take the test, this is how it works. You uh, answer a few questions uh, about yourself, just like a fun, any fun BuzzFeed quiz if you've ever taken one before. You answer a few questions, there's a small opt-in, and then you get a personalized result. You will get one of four results. You're either um, a creative marketer, an analytical marketer, um, a social media pro, or a lead gen expert. That's how it works. And um, you know, if we compare the two now, so go back to comparing. If you look at a blog post which is long, it's wordy, right? It takes around eight minutes to consume, perhaps, whereas my quiz probably took you one or maybe two minutes. The blog post is kind of the same for everyone. You know, um, no matter what kind of person you are, you're still reading all of that content, whereas uh, the quiz gives you personalized results. So you're either one of those four types, which is a bit more engaging. It's a bit more fun. You can relate to that. Um, now, the blog. You know, it's long, it's wordy. Um, you're not really sure that people will actually get through reading all of those words, all of those, I don't know how many words there were in that, but that's pretty long. Content completion rate may not be 100%. Uh, whereas um, the quiz was actually a little bit more engaging, a little bit more entertaining. And uh, those of you who took the quiz actually uh, from starting completed it all the way to the end. That was 100% completion rate on that quiz. So in terms of content completion, also there is uh, there is an upside in using interactivity. Now let's talk about the value for the marketer. Um, when you think about blogging, right, there are so many blogs out there. There's a sea of blog posts and blog content. And of course, I'm not saying again that you shouldn't blog. Either way, it's very important for SEO. It's very important um, for, for your content marketing. But if you compare, right, there's a lot of it out there. It's hard to differentiate. 
whereas a beautifully designed quiz um, has a better chance of standing out. Um, now, if you compare the insights that you can get from a blog post, you probably know what people, you know, how many how many hits you got, uh, how you know what location people are coming from. But apart from that, you don't know a lot. Um, whereas with a quiz, you know all of that, but you also know exactly what people were clicking on, what their interactions were. You know exactly who answered what, so you know a lot more about your customers by using a, blog, uh, a quiz like this. Blogs, uh, we talked a bit about conversion tactics using blogs. Uh, it's a normal uh, kind of subscribe to blog uh, pop-up or, uh, or opt-in that you have. Whereas with a quiz, there are many different ways uh, also to use conversion. There are many different conversion tactics that you can use. We will discuss that a bit later in the presentation today. But also, you have better conversion odds. Um, in fact, with this quiz itself, uh, looking at the data from all of you, I know that uh, there was a 65 conversion rate. So for all the people who landed on the page, who took the URL, put it in the, their browser, um, and completed the test and actually filled out the form, 65% of you did the whole thing. And that, in my opinion, is actually pretty good in comparison to what, uh, what other uh, forms of content offer in terms of conversion. Um, now, we've seen different conversion rates. I have also tested out this quiz by using uh, using a prize or like a giveaway, and there the conversion rate can be a bit more. So it depends, but in general, um, this kind of content does have a very good conversion rate. I feel like I also know a little bit more about you and the audience today. Um, now, I know this is not super accurate, but I have some indication of who you are based off, you know, based off of your questions, uh, your answers to my questions. So I know that the majority of you in the room today are creative, followed by some of you who are analytical, followed by lead gen machines, and followed by social media pros. I also know, as I mentioned, exactly what you answer to what question. So um, for instance, I have a question in there asking you what your favorite platform is. Some of you answered HubSpot. So if I were to uh, unleash my sales uh, animals on you, which I won't, don't worry, <laughs> but if I were to, uh, they might tell you that uh, we integrate with HubSpot, dot integrate with HubSpot. So in a way, you know, I have asked a question without you feeling um, like I'm asking you a question, but you're telling me something about yourself. Um, I also know, for instance, that you all have a sense of humor. I can see that some of you answered that if the building were on fire, the first thing you would do is take a selfie of yourself and tweet it. So I know that you also have uh, a sense of humor. So just with six questions, six little questions, I know so much more about you. And I took things a step further. I uh, integrated with my email software. And I had all of you stream into one of four personality type email lists. So if you were creative, you were in, um, you were in list number one. If you were um, data driven, you were in list number two, so on and so forth. And then I automated uh, my system to send you emails uh, maybe a few minutes ago. You should have received it already. Um, and the email you got is uh, tailored to your specific personality type. Now, I could have done this per question as well. So if you answered uh, something to a specific question, I could have sent you an email that matched your answer to that question. So with interactive content, you can really, in a smart way, uh, without, you know, without being intrusive or without annoying your customer with lots of uh, form fields, you can learn more about them and use that information to make more targeted emails and more targeted pitching. Um, moving on, so data is really key uh, when it comes to this. Marketing is moving towards a new kind of success, one that depends on truly knowing the customer. And throughout the industry, this focus is proving to be the path to better customer relationships and business growth. And this isn't something that I made up. This is something uh, John Travis from Adobe said. So, you know, it's nothing. It, it is a known fact that we need to really leverage on data, uh, mine the right kind of data, and leverage it to our advantage. And you know, let's 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 take it in the perspective of a good salesman, right? Let's talk about the three-step process to higher conversion. 
So what is uh, the most common aspect with a good salesman right, or a good saleswoman? A good saleswoman won't just give you a monologue. She won't just go on harping about something. She will ask you questions. She will listen for your answers and then talk. She will give you a personalized pitch based on what you have just said. So by asking, she is um, engaging. By listening, she is learning. And by talking, she is personalizing. So this kind of process, this step-by-step -step, uh, process, is um, really the key to you know, the concept of interactive content. Excuse me one second. I just have something to check here. Right. Uh, so you know, imagine now applying this, right? Engage and personalize, where you, you know, create content that mines the right data. You use that data to personalize pitches or personalized content. Imagine applying that throughout the buyer journey, right from when somebody is unknown to becoming a new customer and a loyal customer. If you keep making your content more and more personalized to really talk to individual needs, you stand a better chance at accelerating the decision-making process, at accelerating what you want the customer to do, which is to buy. So um, that's kind of the ideology. Now, um, I showed you an example which was kind of a standalone quiz. But by applying or adopting uh, an interactive strategy throughout or um, throughout your content strategy, uh, this is what you can do. You can kind of you know, inject interactivity, interactive pieces into your content strategy that over time develop a more holistic view or image profile of your customer. So throughout time, you know, if the person is unknown, you can take the person from being an unknown to a trackable contact, a trackable contact who you know something about, and then over to a customer and a loyal customer. So each interactive experience will aid in telling you something more about the, about your um, about your target audience, your target customer. I won't go into detail with this example, but just to give you an idea, what's happening here is that this company. Which sells uh, online, which sells uh, not online, but courses for uh, for um, culinary enthusiasts and chefs and so on. They want to sell, of course, their goal is to sell more courses, and they do that um, by using engaging interactive pieces, where each piece tells them more about uh, the individual whose name here is John Smith for <laughs> intensive purposes. And each, um, each piece aids in telling you more about who John Smith is. And then they use that data to, to create more precise pitches for John Smith so that he, um, he converts. They also integrate with sales to empower them with all of the information they've gathered through here. Moving on. Now, we've discussed a lot of concepts. Now I'd like to shift gears and really um, try to get your creative juices flowing. Um, with some ideas and inspiration. We're going to talk about different kinds of interactive content that you can use. Now, uh, I'm sure all of you know this quiz is, um, if, uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you've seen BuzzFeed, I'm sure, and lots of other quizzes online. But um, you know, trivia aside, there are lots of opportunities uh, for us as marketers to use quizzes. So you know whether you're talking classical, you know your classic knowledge quiz, which is maybe a quiz about news or uh, industry news or industry insights, uh, personality tests. This is like kind of like the quiz you took today. Uh, what is your marketing superpower? That is what we call a personality test. Uh, it could also be an educational quiz where each quiz actually each answer, each question. Um, gives you feedback after you answer it. So you're learning while you are quizzing. Um, what happens next quiz? Um, that is when you have a video where it stops in the middle and then it asks you to guess what happens next. You can also turn your quiz into a contest. You can also turn your video into a quiz. There are lots of opportunities. We won't dive too much into it because uh, we don't have time. We only have uh, half an hour left. But um, just to get your uh, imagination going here, I have an example from MasterChef uh, where they created this personality quiz. And 
personality tests and personality quizzes are really, really great at getting social media engagement because people like to share, uh, yeah, I got this personality or that personality or they tag their friends or whatever it is. Quizzes are really, really great to encourage social media engagement. They're small, um, easy to create, and, and, and quite effective. Um, you can also, as I mentioned earlier, use Muse uh, to create quizzes. Um, news uh, like here I have I created this quiz called the Digital Marketing Quiz 2016 where people kind of test themselves on how well they know uh, you know the various digital marketing um, developments that happen during the year and then uh, they can sign in to unlock the full analysis uh, they get a score and they can get the full analysis and all of that so it's a cool way of uh, challenging people of activating them and also for generating leads or not leave them up in. Assessments. Now, uh, quizzes are kind of uh, short, sweet, um, entertaining, engaging. Assessments are tend to be a little bit longer, and they can be a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for, serious. Um, so you can have things like uh, industry benchmark tests. You know, uh, for instance, um, this at the top of my head. Um, is your blogging SEO friendly? If I were to create an assessment like that, you know, benchmark yourself against industry best practices. Or if you have a study, let's say uh, you have a study on um, um, on whatever, really, um, that, that you know you, you had a survey, you had a study based off on that survey. You can ask your audience how they match up to their peers in terms of those industry benchmarks. You can also create a best practice assessment. You know, take you as an expert in your industry, as a content marketer, you know uh, you know the right stuff. You know what you should do, uh, the right way to do whatever it is that you do. <laughs> so you can turn those best practices into a best practice assessment in a really really nice and interactive way. You can also perhaps you're in, you are an insurance company or there is a certain amount of risk, um, uh, the risk component in, in making an investment. Uh, you can always create a risk assessment um, experience where people can test themselves uh, in terms of what their risk exposure is. You can also test people's skills, so perhaps their job skills or professional skills. You can ask them, uh, you can get them to test how compliant they are in terms of laws or industry standards. You can also test how technology ready they are. So as a B2B marketer, there are loads of things you can do here with assessments. And here I have an example from uh, an HR company, uh, which made an assessment, you know, what is your emotional IQ? Um, and here people take, they answer questions and they get a score. With the score, they get personalized uh, recommendations for what they should do, what kind of courses or what kind of workshops suit their score. Um, I have another example here, which is uh, a compliance assessment. So how here, with the, you know, in the U.S. they have a law called HIPAA. It's, uh, it's a health um, I keep forgetting what it's called. It, it, it's a health um, health law, basically. If you work in the health industry, you need to make sure that you abide by those standards. So this company here created a, an assessment where they test their audience in terms of how compliant they are with the law, and then give them uh, give them advice on what they should do to correct uh, to correct the areas where they fall short. Now, um, product recommenders. These are um, these are interactive experiences where you ask the questions, and then the the with the, the interactive experience will tell you what kind of product you should buy. Um, so here I have an example uh, where you answer some questions, and then it will tell you, for instance, here with this company, what kind of cars suit your personality best. Uh, there are many other ways in which you can do it. There are many other applications uh, for this. You could do it for products, for solutions, for services, whatever, where you present the right solution to the user based on their answers. Solution builders. Now, this is um, solution builders are basically um, kind of like assessments, but they give you a more in-depth analysis. So here I have an example from an IT company that does IT outsourcing, and they've made a quiz here. Uh, it's in Danish. <laughs> Excuse that. Um, but it says, should you outsource your IT? 
and you ask it some questions, and then it gives you an in-depth, you know, analysis and feedback based of every question that you've answered, and it also connects you to other pieces of content, maybe eBooks, other things uh, that relate to your answers. So again, it's all about making it personalized. It's all about digging, diving deep into what the person really, what his pains really are business-wise and, and how you can fill that gap either with the content that you offer or with the product that you offer. Interactive infographics. Uh, perhaps you've seen this before, but interactive infographics are kind of an upgrade on infographics where you can have animations, you can have questions in the infographic, voting, uh, people can build their own graphs by clicking on things, uh, clicking on labels and so on. So there's lots of things you can do here as well. We also have interactive ebooks um, with with the idea that you can insert interactivity into ebooks. You can have quizzes in there. You can have uh, interactive graphs, polls. You can kind of you can even partially gate an ebook where uh, people have to enter their information. Um, Certain chapters are locked, so they have to enter their information for certain chapters, but the rest of it is free, kind of like a sneak peek. Uh, you can also make interactive ebooks where the entire ebook adapts itself based on your needs or based on your preferences. So there are loads of things you can do with interactivity. We also have things like calendars and countdowns. I'm sure you've seen this before. Um, advent calendars, um, where or any kind of countdown really where each day there's some kind of um, prize or custom uh, premium content that is released um, that people can sign up for. So each day they sign up for either a piece of custom, uh, sorry, premium content or for some kind of prize. Moving on, uh, calculators. I'm sure, um, I'm sure you've seen this before as well, uh, maybe not, but um, calculators are a really, really great way of um, giving people utility, giving them a tool with which they can make decisions. So, um, you know, things like calculate my savings, how much pension should I expect. Uh, basically, ask people uh, questions, ask them to put in numbers, and then use your own secret sauce uh, equation um, to give them a calculation of something. And um, just on a side note, this is something that we at Dot are developing right now, and by next week we should have something uh, great for you on that to create to create calculators on your own. Moving on, um, interactive video. I'm sure you've seen this before, um, but interactive video is basically um, taking video which is normally a monologue, so people normally just watch video. But when you make them interactive, you can also get people to answer questions while they watch. You can get them to choose their own adventure in the video even. So um, while they are um, you know, in the video experience, they can create their own story. Um, they can even click on products they see or click on things they see and buy, make purchases directly from the video. They can call in the video. They can, uh, you can even gauge parts of the video with, an, with, a, with a lead form. There's so much more. So just think of all the interactive functionality that we discussed today. You can inject all of that into video. So um, let's move on. Um, right, here I have another example. Uh, we won't go into details with this, but basically what's happening here, uh, this is by Calibro, which is uh, the world's largest uh, producer of uh, chocolate for B2B. Um, and they want to, their, their target audience is, um, you know, catering companies or chefs. Um, and what they created was the concept of a chicky, uh, which is a chocolate, uh, chocolate cream puff. They made this concept and they wanted to sell the concept to their customers. And they did so by creating a really great interactive video where the customer could kind of build his own uh, chocolate by choosing the, the chocolate type, the filling, and the base. And then the customer would get the finished product, and they could even download the recipe. So it's a really great way of uh, kind of taking something that you might otherwise just share as a PDF, turning it into something uh, engaging and interactive um, that gives you a personalized result. And this did pretty well on social media as well. People were quite happy. They got a real kick out of it, um, sharing 
what kind of cream puffs they created. So um, moving on. So now we've talked about some of uh, the possibilities, right? Now I would like to talk about you know, what kind of content should you create? Uh, what is the right content for you? And for that, I would recommend uh, that you visit our website, slash templates because we have a panel on the left which will help you filter down the different kinds of content, but also the purpose. So let's say that you want to educate your customers. So click on educate, and then you will see all the types of content that are great for that. Um, so that's a great tool to kind of figure out what you want to create. Now, um, you know, content creation, yeah, it, it takes time. Uh, it takes time and effort and money. And the best way uh, to get started with interactive content, I would recommend, is to start repurposing what you already have. So, you know, if you have a how-to guide, turn it into an educational quiz. If you have a checklist, turn it into an assessment. If you have uh, news facts or industry insights, turn it into a quiz. If you have some risk factors, let's say you have insurance risk factors, turn it into a risk assessment. You know, turn, um, turn, turn um, an explainer video into a fun interactive explainer video. Turn your tutorials into a tutorial where people can ask questions while uh, they watch or people can uh, answer questions while they watch. They can poll. Uh, you can even gate parts of your tutorial video. So there are so many things you can do. And this presentation will be sent to you after uh, afterwards. And um, I might even go ahead and add, uh, add some links to some of the blog posts that I have. Uh, this is from a blog post that we have on our blog. Uh, I will add the links here. But there are 20 different ways um, and more to kind of take what you already have and turn it into something interactive with minimal, uh, with minimal investment. And that's actually another thing. Um, if we, we talked about interactive, we talked about ebooks before, right? We talked about um, it takes, most of you answered that it takes um, like a month to prepare an ebook. And while it's great, um, you might also consider taking some of those facts from your ebooks that you've already made, turning it into an assessment. That way, you know, squeezing the most out of it, or even in the future, you know, investing more in making assessments because they take, uh, if you have your questions ready, it might take you between a day or two to create an assessment max. So um, it's easy and it, 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 it definitely does generate leads. That's why people do it uh, in the first place. We'll get to that in a bit. So all right, lead generation. Let's get into this. Um, what are the different lead generation tactics with interactive content, right? Now, um, some of you who took the quiz might remember that there was an opt-in form before you saw the results. That's a little trick. Uh, but there are other ways, too, to create leads with interactive content. You can have a high gate at the start. So let's say you have um, an assessment that's kind of uh, it's a lengthy assessment which gives you lots of uh, value at the end, gives you a super personalized feedback um, at the end. So, um, you know, for that kind of content, you might be able to have a high gate at the start. Um, but be careful with that because, again, uh, you know, going down the whole ebook uh, road, you don't want to ask people, you know, eight, uh, to fill out eight input fields. You don't need to do that. Uh, you can ask for less and instead embed those juicy little nuggets of important information as questions in your assessment. So it's playing a little bit smarter, right? You can do other things with it. Or having a low gate at the start. Uh, a low gate is when you have, you know, fewer, maybe one or two max uh, fields of information you ask for. You can gate the results. This is something that uh, you saw with the quiz that you took today. Um, you can also just leave it open and ha let's say you have an assessment um, of uh, or or a quiz. You know, are you a digital marketing expert? Where people take a quiz, they get the score, they get some feedback. But to unlock the full Monty, right? Um, sorry, uh, just to go back, somebody had asked what is a high gate. A high gate is um, a lead form that is lengthy. So, you know, not I don't recommend having eight fields in there by no means, no. But a high gate is where you kind of have a high gate. So you ask people for a, a bit of information before they get into something. So maybe between four or five input fields, so name, email, company, um, designation, so on and so forth. So that is a high gate. A low gate is where you ask for less information. 
Um, right. Going on, uh, so unlocking the full analysis, you can also have uh, experiences where you uh, kind of give people a bit of feedback, but you get the full analysis, the full personalized result they need to uh, put in a name and email, for instance. You can also have uh, an opt-in before the result. So, um, you know, have, you know, get the results like what you saw before. You can leave it mandatory or optional. So you can have a gate appear before the result, um, you know, as an option or mandatory. That's up to you. Um, then we have partially gated, right? Um, that is now. Now I am not referring to quizzes or assessments. I am referring to things like videos or uh, ebooks. So if you want, you could also let's say you have some premium video content, right? Something really juicy that uh, that is you know a high level tutorial or something. You could have people watch maybe the first few minutes and then gate the rest of it with a lead form. The same applies to an interactive ebook. You could have people read one or two chapters and then gate the rest. And of course, uh, the classic, uh, one of the favorite ways that marketers use uh, interactive content is they turn it into a contest or a giveaway, where you kind of dangle some kind of juicy prize, hopefully something from your company, and uh, that is that functions as the gate or the, that functions as the the, the opt-in or lead generator. So uh, you know, just looking at the list here on the left, so you have short quizzes, educational quizzes, assessments, product recommenders, solution builders, interactive videos, so on and so forth. And you can see here uh, what kind of gate suits or what kind of content type. You'll get the presentation later on. And if you have questions about this, uh, we can take it either at the end or just get in touch with me with me uh, via email. And we'll discuss it in further detail. Moving on. So uh, we've talked a bit, now we've talked about how to mine data, we've talked about how to create personalized content, we've talked about how to generate leads. Now let's talk about, you know, what are your data needs? If you had a wish, so if you had a genie in a bottle and he could grant you a wish in terms of what you want to know about your customer, what would you want to know? Think about that. Think about, okay, beyond basic contact information or demographic information, what is it that I really want to know about my potential customers? Just put that down on paper. Uh, perhaps you want to know more. You want to know what their needs are, their challenges, uh, what are they, what's their knowledge level, their skills, job performance, department performance, business needs. Maybe you want to know what their personality types are, their opinions, their attitudes towards something, their interests. Whatever it is you want to know, um, just put that down and then think of how you want to, um, how you would use that information to your advantage. If you had that information, what would you do with it? Um, now, apart from releasing your sales animals on them, uh, how could you use that information to nurture your lead, to qualify your lead? Um, perhaps you could use it to personalize content like we talked earlier. So think about what it is you want to know and how you want to use it and then think about how you want to mine this data. Um, you can go with your classic opt-in form, uh, lead gen form. Um, maybe you already have some kind of automation running on your website. Uh, you can know that through uh, navigation, your automation system, or of course, interactive content, which is really, really great at uh, mining those last two types. Um, of course, with interactive content, you can always get contact data and demographic data and loyalty. But most importantly, the real juice here is uh, mining those needs and challenges and that psychographic data that is really difficult to get in most other scenarios. So moving on. Um, now we're getting towards the end of the presentation today. So um, let's talk a few, let's talk a bit about some of the best practices. Um, before you start out with any piece of content, right, I would recommend uh, knowing what your end goal is for each type of content. Um, always balance, um, so, so you know, if, if your goal is social media engagement, pick, pick a kind of content that you believe will get you there. So, and don't go with too much, don't try and, you know, hit everything, don't try and have five different goals. Be specific, you know, do I want social media engagement? Do I want to educate people about a specific ebook that I have already published, perhaps, to promote an existing content asset? 
do I want to create this piece of content uh, for somewhere like mid funnel or end funnel uh, uh, for, for, for a customer who's in the middle of the funnel, so I want to now promote a product or something. So think about what your end goal is and create content based off of that. Um, also, always remember to balance the time and the length of your content experience with the utility or entertainment value it provides um, versus also the value of the personalized experience. So if you are going to ask people like 15 questions and give them feedback, which is one line, that's probably not worth somebody's time. So you need to think about uh, balancing always. It's a balancing act. You know, balance the amount of time they should spend in your experience versus what you're giving them. If you're creating an interactive video where they can create their own story, balance out the entertainment value or the learning value versus how much time they should spend on it. Also, don't ask for too much. So don't. Um, we talked about this earlier. You know, don't 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 ask people for their whole life history. Uh, instead, do it in a smart way. Ask those questions in a smarter way through the content that you have in your interactive experience. So, um, for example, product recommenders. Uh, product recommenders are great, you know, end of the funnel content uh, where you know the customer is already kind of considering making the purchase, and you just want to accelerate that. You accelerate it by helping them choose the right product. Uh, that's a product recommender. Now you're already in sales mode now. You're starting to gear up for sales. So when you're starting to gear up for sales, you're making a pitch. And when you're making a pitch, you shouldn't gate that kind of thing. You shouldn't ask people for information and give them a sales pitch. So you need to kind of balance out these two things. Now if content, contact capture is your goal, then be strategic with where you place your opt-in form. So we talked about this earlier, right? Where and how you can gate content, where and how you can use content. So, uh, sorry, uh, use an opt-in form. So think strategically, always balance out value versus how much you're asking for or where you're placing your opt-in. If you have placed your opt-in at the beginning, remember that there's a chance that people may not do it at all. So there's a chance that people may not fill it out and continue unless you're making a clear promise of what the giveaway is. So if you have an assessment which has an opt-in form or, or a long, a high gate, <laughs> I'm going to use that term again, if it has a high gate at the beginning, you should be clear at the beginning itself in terms of what value your analysis is giving them. So um, always balance that. Encourage social sharing, right? Um, create content that is socially social friendly, that people want to talk about, uh, that they want to share their results or share their experience. Keep that in mind. Uh, because again, you know, the great thing about interactive content is that it is personalized. It gives you personalized results and people want to share that. So keep that in mind. Uh, pick low hanging fruits. So we discussed earlier 22 ways to uh, to repurpose content. So go with what you already have. Start with that. Uh, instead of going on for a going for a giant, gigantic uh, new project. Go for something that you can already achieve. Test it out. See how it works out. And, and go for those easy conversions. Go for those easy, um, low-hanging fruits. Get influencers involved. Absolutely. If you're making a, let's say, a personality test, you know, contact all of your influencers. Get them to share their results, right? For instance, uh, for the marketer quiz, I might have contacted some of my influencers to to tweet uh, that, hey, I got a, I got a data nerd. I am such a nerd, ha. Huh? Whatever. But that kind of thing gets the word out uh, in an organic way without spending a bottle on, on social media um, ads, right? And always, always, always have a strategic follow-up plan. So, um, you know, when you when you do create leads with your interactive content, always have a follow-up plan. What do you want to do with that information? Uh, whatever you learn from customers, whatever their experiences were, you know, follow that up with uh, with a plan, with uh, either personalized pitches or a follow up piece or whatever. Uh, don't just leave it. The, the, one of the mistakes people make is that sometimes they just leave it hanging there, and then they spend months before they they go ahead with the next piece. So um, don't don't do that. All right, I think I am <laughs> I am four minutes early. So um, 
For that, I would just like to close today's webinar. Um, for any of the concepts or ideas that you've seen today, um, you can go ahead to our website, .vu, or .vu slash templates to look at some of the um, some of the concepts we discussed today. Uh, we have something called wizards, uh, which make it really, really, really easy to create these different formats that we talked about today. So you can just get started with that. Um, you can try for free um, to get your feet wet. And if you have any questions or if you have any ideas, um, if you have something that you would like to discuss with me afterwards, go ahead and email me. It's neha at dot dot view. Um, so just feel free to shoot me an email or uh, get started already now um, with trying things out. So um, with that, I would like to close today's webinar and say thank you to all of you for dialing in. If you have any questions, we have a few minutes now uh, where I can take them up. Otherwise, email me. I'm always uh, ready to answer your questions. OK, it looks like we don't have any questions. Um, right, so with that, I'm just going to close today's uh, session. Um, and um, wish you a good day. Thank you. Sorry, somebody has asked whether the webinar slides would be available post event. I believe so. Um, I will just check with um, with the team at um, uh, at Bright Talk and ask them how and when they will send you the slides. But they, they have the content, so they will just send it to you. Um, and it's free. Um, by the way, um, yeah, as I mentioned, you can just check out our website. I'm going to type it in here. That's our website. Uh, if you want templates, uh, wizards, and templates, they are available here. And for some of the content that you've seen today, some of it has actually come from our blog, so you can check it out. It's um, blog dot 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 view. I'm typing it to you now. about it. Um, so I'm off for the day. Wish you all a great day. Um, hope to hear from you. Bye.